Ah, the shrinking brain, a conundrum of age. Mine might disappear soon, considering its starting point. I'll just be all hollow up here, unless there is something that could prevent that from happening, like this diet and these foods that we'll discuss. We'll go over the brain shrinking, different diets, and the best diet among the three for preventing this brain shrinking phenomenon. Let's discuss. In a randomized controlled trial, researchers assigned almost 300 participants to one of three diets. A healthy dietary guidelines diet called the HDG group, that's their gang name too. This diet was just a simple standard counseling to consume a balanced diet, nothing too special other than avoiding processed foods and the like. The second diet was the Mediterranean diet, low in simple carbohydrates, full of vegetables, fish, and replacing beef and lamb with chicken. They also consumed walnuts every day, and the diet was calorically restricted, unlike the HDG. Finally, the third group consumed the same Mediterranean diet with all the same parameters, but also included daily green tea and a wolfia globosa or duckweed shake at dinner, generally in replacement of the other protein sources. This diet group goes by the street name of Green Med. Also, all diet groups underwent basic physical activity sessions as well. If you recognize uh, some of this, it might be because we covered another analysis that included these diets looking at visceral fat. Anyway, an important note is that there were no differences at baseline. So whatever results that we see on the brain would be due to the interventions. I'd also add that the researchers cleverly added a genetic screen for a potent Alzheimer's gene, the APOE4 gene, to make sure that one group didn't have a greater risk from a genetic perspective. Again, all of this was equal across the groups. So now let's speak a little bit on brain atrophy, or as I very scientifically put it, brain shrinkage. These data indicate HOC, and when not pronounced with a frog in your throat, HOC, which represents hippocampal occupancy score, or the density of the section of your brain called the hippocampus. It is known to predict cognitive decline. So as HOC goes down, cognitive decline risk is increased. We see age on the horizontal axis and we see hawk score on the vertical. Remember, higher is better. The individual points are all the participants of the study regardless of diet condition. We can see that HOC, I promise I won't do hawk anymore, remains stable or slightly improves into our 40s, but then it begins dropping around age 50 and then like lobbing a ball, it continues to decline. Again, that decline would predict an increase in cognitive impairment. The researchers also report another metric called LVV or lateral ventricular volume, but considering LVV is included in HOC calculations and the trends are very similar in that data, I'm gonna focus exclusively on HOC, just an FYI. In fact, I can show you what that stuff looks like over the 18 months of the study. Here, we're looking at MRI images of a brain under 50 years old and a brain over 50 years old. And the red is the lateral ventricular volume and the blue is the hippocampal volume. If the ventricular volume increases, that's bad. And if the hippocampal volume decreases, that's bad. We can identify increasing and decreasing by the color and the richness of the color. Blue is shrinking and red is enlarging with deeper colors indicating greater effect. The average measurements are on the right for the HOC. We can see clearly that the things don't change much before 50 and then there's a significant worsening over the year and a half for those over age 50. Okay, so you hit 50, your brain is now at risk of shriveling up like a prune. I'll get there too someday. But this video isn't a doomsday video because there's something to be done. Let's look at hope in the face of despair, like the light of Elendil. If you got that reference, let me know. Now, enter the diets. A reminder, the HDG is the Healthy Dietary Guidelines Diet, the MED or MED is the regular Mediterranean diet, and the Green MED is the same Mediterranean diet, including the two foods or substances, green tea and monkai or wolfia globosa. 
also known as duckweed, also known as Wolfia globosa. It's just kind of all over the place. If the bars move down and have an asterisk, that indicates a statistically significant worsening of the HOC measure that we've been focused on. The only condition that did not show a worsening was the Mediterranean diet with the additional foods. But we're less interested in the total sample and more interested in the data for those who are 50 and older. So the researchers extracted the data for just these individuals, which might offer some clarity. In that sub-analysis, we see that all three diets experienced some worsening. Both Mediterranean diets were superior to the general diet guidelines, although neither was better than the other. I will add real quick that there were some slight advantages to the green med diet in other outcomes. That all shown, let's get into three of the factors that the researchers teased out from the Mediterranean diets. Before that, I'm gonna be covering some more on this study in the extended version of this video that you're currently watching, which as you long know, if you're a regular Physionic viewer, is included with the Physionic Insiders, along with access to all my analyses, and guess what? There's now a new perk, live sessions with me. That's right. If you're a Physionic Insider, you also now have access to live sessions with me where we can discuss this study and so much more. Not to mention the monthly podcast, the premium email list, research reviews, videos, and more. It's a steal, I tell ya. Anyway, the link is in the description if you're interested. Among the piles of data, there are three factors that the researchers deemed important enough to spell out as being highly associated with these brain atrophy preventing effects. Here they are. The factors are walnuts, green tea, and the mankai that we've been discussing before. The researchers are again measuring HOC, but we're comparing three different tertiles of consumption. So low, medium, and high consumption of each. In every instance, consuming more of each was associated with greater prevention of brain atrophy or shrinkage than consuming less. There's even a small chance it'll prevent me from telling you more bad jokes. Unfortunately, it was statistically not significant. So overall, this data informs us of several things. One, a Mediterranean diet, including an energy deficit and general physical activity, slows down brain shrinkage. Two, the same Mediterranean diet and conditions, including green tea and mankai, might provide ever slow slightly better results, ever slow slightly. Three, regardless, walnut, green tea, and mankai consumption associated with protection from brain shrinkage. If you'd like more from this study on other areas of health, check out this following video. And if you're interested in other molecules to protect your brain, check out this video right here. Both will be linked in the description too. See you over there.